our final section before we reveal the class of 2022, we welcome a live interview between two very special guests. First, we have the chef owner of Atelier Crenn in San Francisco, a regular in the world's 50 best restaurants, and she's also the winner of the world's best female chef title, as well as the Icon Award for her work as an activist, championing women's rights and the LGBTQ plus community, and feeding the hungry during the pandemic. Dominique Crenn is a wonderful advocate for change who never stops fighting for better access to nutritious food and fair pay for farmers and restaurant industry workers. So it was a natural choice to pair, sorry, one second. So it was a natural choice to pair Chef Crenn with Michael Alegbade, a young Nigerian chef and owner of Itan Test Kitchen in Lagos, who is passionate about sharing the stories and tradi traditions of his country through food. Chef Alegbade is on a mission to bring African food to the forefront of the culinary world, and we are here to witness a conversation between the two of them. It is my honor to present Chef Dominique Crenn and Chef Michael Alegbade. How's everybody doing? Yeah. First, before we start anything, I think I, I want to say thank you for, for having us here, but I want to say thank you for all the people that put their things together, the server, the waiter, the cleaner, you know, we have to also, this has been a lot of work, so thank you for having us here. I don't know if we're going to talk about anything, I mean, that was, First of all, that was so amazing, you know, this, uh, those, first of all, everybody that's, that spoke today is inspire me uh, so much and I'm going to leave and I think I'm going to be a better person, so. Absolutely. But let's talk about you. <laughs> What's up, Michael? How are you, Chef? I'm good. <laughs> um, so, I'm taking my note here. <laughs> um, first of all, um, Congratulations to become a part of the next, uh, the 15 next class of 2022. You and I know each other for quite a while, you know, and um, I think um, maybe we can tell the world how we met. Um, it was in a club, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I think um, what we have to understand that um, Sometimes when you have connection with people, it's not about suddenly you just meet them and you don't want to talk to them anymore. I think there is a purpose and an and, and importance when you find yourself within yourself with such a clear a vision about the world and then you meet people, I meet people like you and I'm just, I'm just taken by you and um, then I want you to become a part of my life and I want to learn so much more about you because you are, um, you are the next generation, you know? And um, I think we are getting put on earth, you know, um, with a purpose. And then I think when we get a platform like, you know, you guys have been giving me a platform and everybody's been giving me a platform, it's to understand that the reason that we are here, it's also to bring the generation up. So um, uh -huh. let's talk about that. Thank you, Chef. You're welcome. Thank you so much for being a mentor, for being a great friend, and for sharing your love. I am so honored. No. Where's the glass of wine here? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we met uh, a few years ago, right? Yeah. And then um, we had a, 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 a lot of beautiful conversation. Mm -hmm. And uh, first of all, to get to know you. So um, there is one question I'm going to ask you. Um, so um, you left Nigeria for the US when you were 13 years old. Mm -hmm. And then you start to work, uh, not at 13, but you work in, in Great Kitchen. Uh, like 11, uh, 11 Madison Park and Nomad, and um, you were 27 in uh, 2016 and just decided uh, to go back to Nigeria. So tell me about this. Um, 
I believe food is the core of our identity. And being in, in America at such a young age, I was reminded of my identity. America, with its reality, forces you to be aware of who you are um, based on many reasons. Um, the first time I realized I was a black man was when I was in America because the difference um, and the way uh, the, the nature of uh, the, the American reality when it comes to prejudice and racism forces you to look inwards. Um, and working in the industry, um, uh, I'm a third generation chef. My grandmother and my mom are both uh, chef. My grandmother learned uh, pastry art during the colonization of Nigeria under a French chef. My mom, under her, then went to Le Cordon Bleu. So I've been in the kitchen for most of my life. Um, however, I went to study biochemistry and then decided to pursue culinary arts. Um, so going into the industry and working in predominantly white kitchens where Eurocentric foods are being cooked, um, I was forced to constantly ask myself, what role I had to play here. Um, I was constantly reminded, not just by myself, but also some pairs who are like, so, I mean, African, there's really no cuisine, so what do you plan on doing after this? And, or, and, or questions such as, what chefs are in Africa that we can actually, you know, resonate with or talk to? And I said, there are many chefs. Um, and um, at a, I was actually 26, when I decided, after 14 years being in America, I decided to come back home. I have not been back home even for a visit since then. And um, I, I realized if I actually wanted to be that representation of my culture, my, uh, our cuisine, I needed to really understand what that meant. Not from nostalgia, not from the idea that I'm also Nigerian by blood, that, that for me was, was just the surface. For me to really understand and be a representation of our cuisine and our culture, I needed to go back. So I bought a one-way ticket and went back, um, traveled to the rural areas, which I'd never been to um, as a kid, because I was just a kid while I was in Nigeria. So I got to experience Nigeria from as, um, as a new person. Um, going to the cooking with the women who have kept our cultures, um, especially our food traditions for generations and learning from them, absorbing everything that identifies our cuisine and makes our cuisine unique. And in learning that, um, I decided to open a kitchen in Lagos. And you know, I had this aspiration to show the rest of the world how great our cuisine mm -hmm. uh, is. And in opening that kitchen in Lagos, um, it became very uh, ev vivid to me that the people that really actually needed to understand our cuisine is us. Um, uh, the, the, we've been so myopic, especially in Lagos, of what our cuisine as Nigerians entailed. So in going around the country and really understanding the intricacies, intricacies of our food and our cuisines, um, I was able to present um, different perspectives of, um, such as like a dish from the South uh, East, uh, Biafra time, where they had to cook in the forest without fire. So they used acid to cook their fish. In the West, we know that as ceviche. There, it was a dish made out of necessity because if they burnt mm -hmm. fire, they, it was smoke signal. Mm -hmm. But that's not conversations we have about our cuisine or experiences we have our, uh, about our dishes. So I realized the change that I wanted to see globally had to begin at home. Mm -hmm. We had to know our cuisine, appreciate our cuisine, I and mean, express it in the most uh, vivid ways. Um, I, I, from the plates we use to um, the drinks we drink, um, and for me to how I express myself holistically, like what I wear is, are by Nigerian designers, uh, my shoes, but it's just 
I think for us to be so representative, it's very important to tell the narratives that um, needs to be heard. And I for you as well, you left France at... Uh, but I, 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 I want to I wanna go back to this because this is a very important point that people need to understand. To tell story to the others, to the world, we got we to gotta know our own story. And if we don't know our own story, that we can't tell the story. You know, food is culture. Mm -hmm. You know, food is a connector. And, um, you know, it's interesting when people say, well, there is no cuisine in Africa. You know, it's like it's almost in, in a way that that narrative is really upset me because um, uh, the way that people uh, suppress the others is to use those negative and, and word and the only thing that is good in this world is the Western thing. You know, that's not true. So it, it's, it's, we, it's the time now, it was the time yesterday, to make sure that we have to know our own story, mm -hmm. wherever you are in the world. And for what I'm learning today with everybody's talking, there is, there is a sense of like owning yourself and your own power to be able to get that power to the other. And that's, that's amazing. Um, what do you mean, you want to talk about me? Yes, I want to talk about you. You're um, incredible. I don't really want to talk about myself. Uh, <laughs> no, I want to talk about you. You've done so much. Uh, you left uh, France uh, around in your 20s as well. Yeah, so I, I um, study... Um, economy and international business, and um, I was so over the bureaucracy uh, that uh, I love France, this is my country, love France, but such a mess right now, and they've been a mess for a long time because it's, there is so much bureaucracy there mm -hmm. and the creativity is not, is kind of pushed on. So I wanted to, um, you know, I'm a seeker of the truth, and so what I mean by that, that I'm always curious about what's happening in the world, because I, understand, I understood at a very young age, to be able to develop who you are, you need to be able to search and to be curious about what the world is giving you and giving you the others. So, um, obviously, America, you know, watching all those movies, you know, Starkey and Urch and all of that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, I wanted, I just, I came to San Francisco and I fell in love with San Francisco and then I was forced, kind of, to get into the kitchen because I needed to make money. And from mm -hmm. that is, I look at food uh, as a language, as a connector, as an art, and, and hopefully develop my own skill to be able to get there. And then now is, is with the platform that I've been giving, um, I'm totally at the service of others, and I mm -hmm. think I want to continue that. So thank you for being here and the next generation. So it's, it's really an honor to be here. I'm going to cry right now because <laughs> it's amazing. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, sir. Yeah. All right, so um, there, is a, there is this code on the website, and I think you touched this. Uh, a stream that forgets its source will surely run dry. So it's kind mm -hmm. of this idea of... Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, just being in the state for so long, I, I felt like I was running dry. Um, I was the stream that forgot its source. Um, and going back home, I found the source. And I'm able to be refilled, rejuvenated, and in being rejuvenated and being fulfilled, you're able to share. Mm -hmm. You're able to then give. And that's what uh, that quote meant on my website. So, so, you, so if we go to your restaurant, why, what do you think um, of obviously, you know, see, I think I think about restaurant is not about the food, it's about what emotionally you can get out and, mm -hmm. and, and the learning. So what do you think we can learn uh, when we go to your restaurant about the culture, the mm -hmm. food, but also the philosophy and, and what will make us a better person. Absolutely. Um, so, Itan in Yoruba, which is my dialect, um, means story or history. Um, and that's what we do. Each menu, um, we run it for about eight weeks and then change it to a different region of the country. We have over 250 ethnic groups in Nigeria and close to almost three million people in the country. So we have such diverse uh, cultures across different plains from the desert, the northern people. Um, my mom is Fulani, my dad is from uh, in the north and my dad is from the um, southwest. 
uh, the Yoruba people, and in, in, in the expression of food at Eton, we choose the different regions um, to express in the menu. But beyond regions, uh, we also, maybe a time of the year, uh, Odun, Odun Ileya is when Muslims celebrate by slaughter. And we've spoken about the connection with uh, animals and, like, uh, and, and slaughtering and you know, the quote from Rene Rizepi, that's how I grew up. Like during the Leia festival, you go to every street and you see um, a ram being slaughtered um, and you see it being skinned and you're constantly aware of where your meat is coming from. Mm -hmm. And culturally, we eat every single part mm -hmm. of our meat from the skin, which we smoke, then cook very tenderly, and it's almost like halogen. I know other cultures have this, and we call it momo, with the tripe, the intestine, um, the, the meat itself. I, I, was, I was talking yesterday about a culture shock that I had uh, coming back home. I went to a local canteen and I asked for um, beef as the meat choice in my soup. And it came to me and it had offals, it had uh, pomoy, it had all the uh, realities, all, all the parts of the animal. And I almost wanted to say, oh, this is not what I ordered, mm. but it is exactly what mm -hmm. I ordered. So all those narratives um, with each course of the menu at Eton, we're telling stories of our reality in the different, uh, very uh, diverse. Uh, do, do you think that, that perhaps we have lost that reality of, 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 of what matters and, and, and start to live in, 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 a, in a world of convenience and, and kind of instant gratification and greediness where we are love, we, I think we are lost the connection of mm -hmm. what food is about. Mm -hmm. You know, it's interesting we're talking about plant-based and veganisms and, mm -hmm. and, and then some obviously uh, there is some people that might not understand that but at the end of the day it's, it's really um, uh, the connection that mm -hmm. we have with this food so there is places all over the world that are very much sustainable of you know having their you know vegetable but also their meat or mm -hmm. their protein or whatever but this is this is an exchange mm -hmm. you know we are, we have a tendency i think we have took so much from nature mm -hmm. that we 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 have forgotten to commune back to that and um we were talking earlier about uh veganism and all that and i think I, I want people to start to forget about that word i think it's about high vibration food, you know? What is the high vibration? Whatever you cook needs to have high vibration. If you eat something and cook something that you have no idea where they come from, and then it's been um, uh, manufactured and, and go through different ends, then this, mm -hmm. is, this is, it's a human made things. Mm -hmm. I think food needs to come from, you know, the soil and the rest. Mm -hmm. It could be also, you know, chicken or that, mm -hmm. but this is, you take care of that. So mm -hmm. um, we have to change the narrative. So how we can change that narrative to kind of rebalance this mm -hmm. world and to get to a place where we all working for one thing, or mm -hmm. maybe we need extremisms to go back to the middle. So I mm -hmm. don't know, what do you think about that? I don't think there's ever one solution. Um, I think a lot of parties are going to have to play roles in creating um, the new sustainable. Um, I like to look to the past. I, I, I'm actually one oh, that don't think that everything in the past is good. Um, I think we look at the great things from the past, we learn from their mistakes, we learn from the good things that they've done, and then we look at the future, the mistakes we've made, and then from those realities, we'll, we, we try to create the future we want. Um, when it comes to, like, I, I agree with you, like, the and a speaker earlier, um, in the ideation of how we treat animals and plants, it's the same thing. You know, there, there are things that have taken time to grow to become food for us to eat. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, I think the, some of the biggest problems we're having um, in the food space is um, the disconnect from the soil, as you right. said. Like, in I, well, traveling around Nigeria, we're, we're cooking a soup. The woman goes to her backyard and she's harvesting ugu. Ugu is pumpkin leaf. Mm -hmm. um, and she brings it into the kitchen. She's not wasting, she knows how long it took her to grow that Why? ugu. 
So she's taking the time to make sure every single leaf, it's not just being rinsed and thrown down the sink or being thrown on the floor. She's very intentional about how she uses every single aspect of the vegetable. Um, the roots are also being used. The pumpkin itself is being used. Um, and, you know, like we, ha we eat a lot of po potatoes in the West, but how often do you go to a store and see potato leaves? Right. They're edible. Right. So why aren't they a source of uh, vegetable? I mean, this is, this is amazing. Once again, I'm so inspired here. Yeah. <laughs> Which I, obviously, yes, I think uh, what, the way you think is, you know, from the 1950s to now, we, 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 sorry to say that, we fucked up the world. We fucked up humanity, we messed up everything, and, and the things, the food industry is a big, big, is, is being a big, you know, actor in this. Mm -hmm. And I love that your generation is thinking about, yes, we have to look in the past mm -hmm. to find the answer of today so we can move forward for tomorrow. Mm -hmm. and, and I love that. And, and I want everyone to, to leave this, 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 this uh, uh, 50 next today, tonight, and think about that where you are in the world and really let that sink. You know, we have to have the courage to do things that sometimes we think is risky because somebody is not going to be ugly or not going to like you or their demand is not what you're going to do. You have to be yourself, but you have to make sure that we have to reconnect from the past and the knowledge from our ancestor to come back, you know. You know, I live in a country um, called America. I don't know if you know that country. <laughs> uh, but there is not a lot of history. Mm -hmm. It's a 300 years, but the story is from the Native American, mm -hmm. which been, you know, slaughter and all that. And then we, you know, we have to, we have to go there, especially in California. It's amazing and the knowledge. So it's, it's, it's also not being afraid of doing the things that you need to do mm -hmm. to make sure that uh, where you are, the time and place and your community, and also bring your community up and, and bring them a voice is very important, you Absolutely. know? And there is a lot of people here that, everybody here is, is incredible, you know? I am so inspired. I have had so many conversations and we still have many conversations with people here. And I'm, it, it's so fulfilling, it's so hopeful. I feel so hopeful. Um, in seeing the amount of incredible work that everyone here is doing in their region, in their space, um, which uh, I, would, I would like to ask you, what advice would you have for young people, not just the chefs in the room today, um, what, in, in terms of working and collaborating and creating, what, in, from your past, what have you seen and seen the reality of the diversity of skills that we have here today, what would you suggest in how we work together, how we collaborate, um, how we well, learn from I, each other? Yeah, I think, I think it's a good question. You know, first of all, the first things that everybody has to know is to own their own power mm -hmm. and to understand their place and their confidence and, and, and to understand that we do not own that knowledge. The knowledge that we have is meant to be shared with others and others need to share their knowledge with us. And that's the way that I think we're gonna move forward, you know. Um, there's a lot of great people, especially John, John Gray, are you there? Where are you? Ghetto Gastro. Gastro, where are you going? <laughs> um, anybody can come and join the conversation if you want. But um, we got four minutes? <laughs> I thought it was five. <laughs> um, um, so it's, it's, it's also, we have to walk into this world with humility. Mm -hmm. That we're not better than others, and others are not better than us, but the way that we're gonna move forward is to share, to, com to, to commune, to, to partner, to create things that uh, we are never created, you know. Um, we talk about diversity. When you're in a room and you have people, a diversity of people with different way of thinking, mm -hmm. and you're in a group, together, the, the conversation flow, and what mm -hmm. happened with that conversation, it create new ideas, and that's what we need to do. We can't keep mm -hmm. 
bringing the same idea mm -hmm. over and over again. We can't have mm -hmm. menus with the same things over and over mm -hmm. again. You got to be you. You got to share who you are. So that's what I think. And you've used your platform so beautifully um, to shed light on marginalized people. My light black, is your light. Uh, yeah, indeed. <laughs> um, and black people. Uh, how would you suggest that um, your peers and um, great chefs around the world can also use their platform to bring light to marginalized and black people, especially chefs um, in the industry? Well, I think, first of all, they need to understand the world of chef. The world of chef is as so much responsi responsibility um, in this world because cooking for people is to bring people together. So who are we? to marginalize, you know, a, a, a different culture. This is wrong and it's been done and it's, it's wrong and we need to change that. So whether I will invite everyone that is a chef here, go travel, you know, ask to be invite, invited in a place that you've never been in the world. Uh, go there with a lot of humility and, and, and really absorb the knowledge that that place is going to give you. And from that, you create friendship and exchange, and that's how we get to, um, to, uh, to bring those voices out, you know. Um, I think Africa is an incredible continent. I think Africa is badass. Uh, I think everybody that in my life that come from there are the most incredible, loving, oh. uh, smart <laughs> people, and, and it's just, it's, it's, it's such, um, a pleasure, but an honor to be able to share because, you know, I come from another part of the world, but it's like we're all different, but our difference, that, that's what makes our own beauty. So be the light also of others, but never deem somebody light because that's not good, so. Chef Dominic Crane. Thank you so much, Chef Dominic Crane and Michael Elegbede.